So five minutes ago, I kind of ran through what kind of shape the city is in, and it, it's in, it's in tough shape here in COVID. Uh, with reconciliation, uh, the needing to uh, address the systemic racism, uh, homelessness, and and the overdose crisis. So, um, so we've started to put forward solutions. So nobody can escape uh, what was happening at Oppenheimer Park and now in, in Strathcona Park. And what we're what we're having to do to deal with the day-to-day -day work of the city, as well as to address these, I think, it's the, really what is the biggest homeless encampment in the in the country is to start calling special council meetings is that we can't actually get through the regular business of council and at the same time deal with these extraordinary crises like for example getting special uh, patio licenses issued quickly enough to keep businesses alive so um, so that's really uh, what, what the, one of the tools we've been using to try to address this problem meanwhile trying to keep some of the planning staff uh, trying to keep some of the planning staff thinking about the long term because that that is so important and how will this all change both our social and economic uh, makeup. Uh, one thing uh, I, I tried to do just last night was to try to propose a, a pilot project, a proposed a pilot project that would uh, look at our 68,000 uh, basically single detached home lots uh, in the city and find a way to perhaps make them more affordable to uh, to folks uh, under this uh, making a home scheme that I that I uh, proposed was that uh, you could build up to four uh, strata units on a, on a single uh, single detached lot as long as you had put in up to two additional units that were permanently removed from the market uh, so that folks could buy them but they would sell them back at a, at a much reduced rate and uh, had lots of hope for this, but unfortunately, uh, council really killed this uh, last night. So I'm back to the drawing board, trying to push things ahead with housing affordability, at least for the uh, those folks who find themselves in the in the missing middle. Um, where we've uh, cooperated well on council, though, has been through the Modern Income Rental Housing Pilot Program, and and really what that is, is trying to realizing that we're in a uh, a housing market that's dominated by the market, uh, you know, 92% of the units is, and, and most of the units coming online are gonna be built by the market, is to try to bend the market uh, so that we can get more and more housing uh, paid for by using the local tools we have. So this MERP uh, housing uh, pilot program, 20% uh, of the units in these uh, basically rental buildings from kind of five to, you know, just over 20 stories, 20% uh, of these units would be for, uh, households making between uh, thirty and eighty thousand dollars, and they would be permanently protected uh, for the life of the building. So we've actually passed ten of those buildings, uh, most of them uh, with good, healthy council majorities, and we've got a whole bunch more to come with the pilot project having up to twenty. So I do talk to lots of other mayors about this, and they say, "Oh yeah, yeah, we uh, we do this on um, we do this on uh, on public land." I said, "No, no, this is private land. This is land that's owned by uh, usually a, a larger developer." But who want to build rental uh, instead of condos, and we're starting to get some some units that are affordable uh, for folks that are starting to come online, uh, which is exciting because then we can have like working people living in the neighborhoods where they're working. Uh, so what's really important here, though, and what's at the core of all the decisions that come out of my office is that the health and safety of vulnerable residents need to be the top pri priority in not only our pandemic response, but in our long-term uh, long term planning. So uh, how we do this, of course, is we're always in constant contact with the three host nations, but also now starting to make better inroads into the very large urban indigenous population that are away from their home territories. And when you look at uh, all the stats to do with policing or with, uh, with health or with with uh, with uh, housing shortages, indigenous folks are well, well overrepresented in, in all of these uh, the not good categories in, in terms of, of of folks that need the most assistance and and hands up uh, to get to really to have have lives that are that are much better than than many are currently having. So, uh, how do you combine all these things? Reconciliation, uh, dealing with uh, vulnerable populations in a very market oriented city is, is the challenge that I think all planners are gonna face uh, and, and academics and, and theorists is how do, we, 
how, we can have good ideas, but but how do we pay for them? Uh, but also, how do we kind of fit them into the current structure uh, that we have? Um, the thing is, is that a lot of these uh, a lot of these issues are interconnected. Of course, poverty, housing, homelessness, overdoses are are all interconnected, and uh, and very, very challenging. But the problem is that a lot of the funding and policy comes from three different levels of, of government and four if you count the regional level. So the trick is to try to coordinate these. Is really, and that's really how I see my job as mayor. Uh, Justin McElroy uh, jokingly calls me the lobbyist in chief. But, but what I've been really trying to do is to, is to tell the federal government where we need, what kind of money we need and work with other mayors to do that and then pitch particular projects uh, to get to land the money here in, in the city to do the same thing with, with the province. And so um, I've been able to do that. I probably landed, I don't know, probably half a billion dollars at this point, uh, whether it's for childcare spaces or uh, rent subsidies for, for workers uh, in, in permanent buildings or uh, social housing units, uh, all of those kind of things. Uh, that's, that's really what I put my emphasis in as well as trying to get things uh, through council. Um, so I'll perhaps end there. Um, I guess I really, I'm, maybe I've given the impression that I'm on the, feel like I'm on the front line here and, and I really do. Uh, you know, when I was an academic, I. I love to hang out with political philosophers because that was really the the most uh, you know uh, I know your brain I think goes to the places that you never thought it would go when you're looking at political philosophy and then what I liked about urban studies was uh, was that it merged the theoretical and the practical uh, in the in, in the federal realm when I was a federal MP it all seemed theoretical all the time and then you'd all vote on billions of dollars and you never know where it went really. But at the city level, it is, I think, uh, the place for me. I, I enjoy taking a time out and, and having uh, conversations with smart people about where the city should go. Uh, I love the theory, but in the end, it's all about helping out the most vulnerable in our city, I think, and, and making it a, a city that works for everyone. So uh, I've probably taken my 10 minutes and maybe a little bit more than that, but just wanted to thank you so much for, for listening to me and happy to answer your questions. Thank you very much, Mayor Kennedy, for that overview and for that dispatch from the front lines. Uh, I think many of us who are uh, political and planning junkies have been wondering how, uh, it, what it's like uh, to have to deal with this uh, particular crisis and particularly have to keep your eye on so many other balls that were already critical before this uh, pandemic broke out. So appreciate your overview of that. Uh, you've also given me uh, a new phrase, uh, having Amazon Prime expectations, I think is a pretty good summary of, uh, of some of the sentiments that are out there today. So uh, thank you very much for that. Actually, I have, to give my wife credit. I have to give my wife credit for that one. <laughs> that <ash. laughs> okay, well, I'm the Amazon junkie in our household, so uh, I'll say my greetings to her anyway. Uh, 